this lab is the determination of a molecular formula from the general chemistry lab manual. So one of the most important properties of a compound is its stoichiometric ratio of its elements or its formula. And so in this lab, you're actually going to see how we can determine a molecular formula using stoichiometry and a couple different isolation methods. So you're going to use a, a copper chloride salt that also has a waters of hydration. So these are again are uh, molecules of water that are part of the structure. So as you've read in the lab manual, the general uh, quick procedure is, is that you're going to take a certain mass of copper chloride hydrate of unknown formula, you're going to heat it, um, you'll see a chemical reaction there happen. Um, when that reaction is done, you're going to measure the water loss uh, by how much mass has disappeared. So you'll be able to get moles of water from that water loss. Then you're going to redissolve the salt uh, in water and react it with aluminum wire uh, in a chemical reaction that forms uh, elemental copper, so solid copper. And then you will uh, isolate that copper by filtering it uh, by means of vacuum filtration. You'll, we'll talk about that. And at that point, you'll let that dry so the water it, uh, gets off of it, and then you'll get the mass of the copper. So you'll be able to know the mass of the water, which will give you moles of water. You'll also be able to get mass of copper, which will give you moles of copper. And then the everything else you will just assume then was chlorine, so you'll be able to get the moles of chlorine by using that original mass before you heated it and then subtract out the, mold, the grams of water lost, the grams of copper, to get um, the mass of chlorine. And so using those ratios then, you should be able to stoichiometrically figure out what a, a realistic formula uh, for this thing will be. So in terms of objectives, this will cover uh, use of the balance, glassware, you're gonna use a hot plate, uh, it's a quantitative lab. But most importantly, it also talks about interpreting chemical reactions. So you're gonna to need to be very careful in perhaps your experimental uh, recordings in terms of, you know, if you see color changes, uh, things going from colorless to cloud or cloudy to clear or vice versa. Uh, these are all smells. All these sorts of things are uh, bubbles. You know, these are all things that can be uh, our observables. So there are a couple significant changes from the lab manual. First of all, you work in pairs. Uh, but the main thing is, is that the section of the experiment where they use a crucible to heat it over a Bunsen burner is being replaced. Uh, crucibles are a little bit hard to handle, and so instead we're going to use uh, your Petri dishes, which are in your drawers, um, and a hot plate. And so you can use that both, uh, use the hot plate both to heat the sample to do the initial dehydration, as well as uh, when we're trying to dry the copper at the end, we can use a hot plate uh, to do that instead of the heat lamps. But other than that, everything else uh, will be the same. So when you start, it's important not to get the hot plate too hot. Gentle heating is enough. Somewhere over 100 is fine, probably about 250, uh, anywhere between 150 and 200. So at this point, you're going to use the Pyrex dishes, so you're going to have to get masses of those. And then you're going to weigh out about a gram of compound. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. And the main thing is that you have to know exactly what it is. And this has to be a careful measurement, so you're going to need to have you know, all the windshields and things like that up on the balance. Now, a sample may have some clumps in it, so you really want to use a spatula or your spoon or something to really break up those clumps. The clumps could be uh, could heat unevenly. You could uh, not get rid of all the water uh, when you do this. So it really, you know, do a good job of sort of breaking up the big clumps and then smash the, the smaller clumps with the end of your spatula. Make sure it's still kind of loose and that you don't accidentally lose any on your spatula or else it will affect your mass. Um, if you're really nervous about it, you can always weigh your sample again just to make sure that you didn't uh, lose any sample in that on your spatula. So at this point you can start heating your sample and do the first reaction. Now, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to show you what happens, but you'll definitely observe a change if you've got the heat up at the right heat. And so you'll want to continue doing that until your sample has completely changed. And uh, now you usually take about 10 to, to 15 minutes. Make sure, again, there aren't any clumps. After it's done, you could let it cool, and you're going to need to get the mass of this, of this new converted solid uh, with the dish. And since you already have the previous dish, then you'll be able to figure out, uh, you have the mass of the dish from the first time, you'll be able to figure out what your final loss of water is in this case. 
Now, even after you've just driven off all the water, you actually have to redissolve it. So you're going to need to very carefully transfer that solid to a new beaker, whatever size uh, you want. Usually a little bit smaller, you know, the medium-sized beakers would probably be the best for this. But you're going to, you know, try to use a scupula to transfer as much of it as you can without spilling. And then you can use some water uh, and a dropper to sort of wash off the plate. You want to make sure all the copper is off the plate. So after you have your solution, you'll add a little bit more water to make a solution. And you'll take some aluminum wire. You'll need to figure out some way of coiling it. I did it around a glass rod. And you will plop it into the solution. Make sure it's totally submerged uh, in the solution. Again, I'm not going to show you what the reaction does, but you should start to see some bubbling right away. And so then this is going to proceed for a certain amount of time. Now, to ensure that this reaction goes all the way, you periodically need to sort of knock the solid copper off of the wire. You want to keep exposing new wire uh, when you do this. So just use your glass rod and kind of knock it off into the solution. But observe what's happening to the solution too. So eventually this, the bubbling will subside and uh, the reaction will look uh, less blue and you'll be able to uh, remove the, the aluminum wire. So I would stretch it out with a pair of tweezers It'll be easy with two pairs of tweezers from two students. You might need to use this, this squirter uh, dropper to kind of squirt some of it off. Do your best to kind of, you got to get it all clean though. Now it says to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to clear up cloudiness. Um, if you think your sample is a little cloudy, add a few drops. Don't add a ton. That's not really what it's for, but it'll help with the filtration if it's too, uh, if it looks sort of viscous. That's usually aluminum salts that can be removed once you acidify. So depending on your instructor, you might have different methods for removing the copper. We are going to use a Buchner funnel. So this is a plastic funnel. It's got two pieces. You put it together and you sit it in a filtration flask that's in your hood. It's hooked up to a vacuum manifold. So you'll have some filter paper that will go in the Buchner funnel. Main thing is you need to get mass of the filter paper. Now I forgot to put on the windshield. So you need to put the windshield on. Get the mass of the filter paper and then that will fit in the Buchner funnel. Okay, now this is on a vacuum manifold, so there will be a vacuum pump that you can turn on. There will be a stopcock that will control the vacuum to the flask. And at this point, you'll have uh, your sample, and you'll pour a little bit of water on there and then dump the rest of it in there, and you'll see a nice, uh, it'll start to filter. You might need to use a little bit of water. There will be some squirt bottles there, or maybe you just use your dropper to wash it out and sort of get all the copper, and you can see it looks sort of nice and coppery. Uh, onto the filter. Okay, so with the filter, with the vacuum flask, it will very quickly remove the water um, and allow you to move on to the next step. So one potential point of error is that there could be water left in this sample that will uh, stick to it and have mass, and so then we'll overestimate the mass of our copper. So we need to make sure our sample is dry. So we're going to do this by first rinsing the copper with ethanol, which is a lower boiling point solvent, and will take away the water. So we're going to turn off the vacuum manifold. There will be bottles of 95% uh, ethanol in the hood. You can now just add it, and you don't have to turn on the vacuum right away, uh, but then turn it on and let it suck, and then we'll just let it air dry. So we'll let air go through this uh, for a length of time. Now to also help get rid of it, we're going to heat the sample. So I did it with a Pyrex dish. Other instructors do things differently. So I weigh the Pyrex, a new Pyrex dish, and then I will dump the sample. After we're done, we'll turn off the vacuum uh, with the stopcock, and you can dump your sample in uh, with the filter paper. Now, the things are going to stick to the filter paper. Make sure nothing's left in there. And then I dry the whole thing with the filter paper. Again, don't heat it too hot on the hot plate because the hot plate, the, the dish itself might crack. Um, but then eventually, um, I found that I was able to sort of scrape off most of the copper. As long as you can get, all, you know, you need to get the vast majority of the copper off. Uh, the filter paper tends to hold on to ethanol a little bit longer than the metal does. So, you know, it, for me, I thought it was a good idea. We'll have to see how it goes for other people. Um, you need to make sure, though, that you get all of it off. And so that's really a key, a key variable. So finally, I dried the sample a little bit longer, about 10 minutes or so, um, with the hot plate about 100, 200 degrees, and let it cool. And then I took, uh, after I took it off, I got another mass again. I forgot the windshield on the balance. Uh, you really need it on this one because the differences are pretty small.
tools. We're not generating a ton of trash. Uh, copper solid is something that can be put in the regular trash uh, with the filter paper. Um, if you have any residual copper solution um, or uh, and a little bit of dilute HCl in case you did that, if you add a little bit of HCl, then you can flush that down the sink with plenty of water. If we had a high amount of copper that or HCl, we would need to consider it as different. But considering the amounts we have, this should be fine.